But if out the gate you're saying that because I believe that Rosa Parks sat on a bus and mm. didn't refuse to not give her her seat, that I'm woke. Yeah. I don't understand how you can call me this new derogatory term that you've created when this is just a fact that happened. I don't know where we start here, ma'ams and sirs, yes. and non-binary <laughs> pals. <laughs> How is everybody today? Wonderful. How are you, honey? I'm fucking fabulous. Hello. The world may not need another podcast, Back. but it definitely could use a slap. That's right. Welcome to Slap the Power, the show that aims to turn artistry into advocacy through the universal power of music, comedy, movies, visual arts, and beyond. I am so, so effing happy to have my co-host Maya Sykes on the panel right here for this ride. Aww. You might recognize her as a finalist from The Voice. Or singing with? Uh, I've been singing with BB Rexa and Billy Idol as of late. Oh, wow. Never heard of. Never Either. heard of. <laughs> little lesser known folk. <laughs> no, nah, killing it. But uh, my girl also got a poli sci degree from Yale and a fellowship from Oxford. So she ain't playing, y'all. She ain't playing. And my wonderful co host is none other than world touring musician and bassist for the band Vintage Trouble and creator of the Slap Podcast Network, Mr. Rick Barrio Dill. Now, we at Slap the Power aim to fuse the unique power of artists talking with their art and their stories together to try to raise awareness on key issues and work together to make meaningful changes in our communities and worldwide. And because it seems so much of today is both ridiculously important and insanely stupid, <laughs> all at the same time, we're here to help you keep track of what is what and make sure that we make fun of it all because if we can't take the piss out of it it ain't no good facts facts so let's do this let's do this right here sonics love, love action, action progress, progress. Yeah, let's baby. slap the power together. together today we are talking about this state she a little cray cray <laughs> she a little swampy but she beautiful she so beautiful we can't state. so we can't discount her that's right we're talking today about miss florida that's right florida ma'am uh <laughs> florida ma'am florida ma'am she's really um florida-ing lately. yeah she is florida -ing. what's mm -hmm. happening in one of the largest electoral count states in the union and why uh this drugstore level fascism that's happening in florida right now is bad news for democracy how we got here and uh, what we can do to learn and help each other, because I, uh, I'm i from Florida, and so this is near and dear to my heart, but also from Florida, and joining us in the studio today, yeah, yeah, to discuss all of this is a true legend in the dance world, choreographer to the stars, yes, and that's right, and she has put the dance in So You Think You Can Dance, bitches, please <laughs> yeah, welcome yeah, one yeah. of my favorite humans ever manifested, M star Miss Miranda Davis. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, welcome to Slap the Power. <laughs> so I just wanted to uh, really get the chance to dive into. You do so many wonderful things in this industry, and I wanted to get the chance to dive into your mindset and how this new Florida attack on democracy affects you because you work with young kids, kids approaching voting age. So, what is your insight about where dance and art have a place? In this, you know, trans kids are being attacked. Uh, there's the the whole being woke thing has, you know, got this really weird assignment. What are you personally um, seeing in your own changes and in your own approaches to young people right now? Yeah, it's it's very relevant for me. Uh, the age group I mostly work with is 15 and up. So, okay. like you said, they're approaching voting age and. Um, they're very affected by all of this, and I work with kids from different parts of the country, so um, it depends what pocket you're in. But, um, you know, one of the biggest things I've seen is the level of anxiety in their generation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Almost all of them are medicated. Jesus. Um, and uh, it's interesting, you know, when you're a high level dancer, typically um, at some point you might homeschool, right? Because dance becomes like a life. Yeah, a 12 hour thing. 
And I noticed more and more people were homeschooling and I would say like, oh, is it because of dance? And they'd literally say to me, no, it's because I'm scared I'm going to get shot at school. Oh, my God. So just imagine that, you know. That's just a dagger in my it, heart. It, it, These babies. It's horrific. Uh. It's a horrific reality. So yeah. I always try to make a statement with my art. I want people to walk away and, and uh question something i want people to as as important as representation is it's also equally as important not to recognize yourself on stage or screen because there's a story and we then empathize with somebody that is different than us right so i'm constantly pushing it and as much as i can i can't go home with them as their parent and change right. their minds but I definitely have a big place in their lives and try to move the needle as much as I can as mm -hmm. I know they're approaching that age. I understand. We are in California. We, You and I moved here and, and it was just like fish to water. Yeah. Right? It was just like, this is my favorite city on planet Earth. It is a different thing. In so many ways, we are the most liberal and it feels the most worldly. The thing that's that's concerning me is I, I think the woke it thing that, that's going on, this attack against woke and everything, blankets us right. as another. And, bland, and but that's then, why it was designed. Yeah. Right? <laughs> that's why it was designed. All of these things are tools. Yep. All of these things are tools to dissuade natural dissension. Yep. If you can get people to abdicate control over what they have access to and the knowledge to which they have access, yep. then you can get them to abdicate control over their person. Mm -hmm. and, and people are so scared of what they don't understand, they're easily manipulated. And that's been the way there. And mm -hmm. it's worse. Working. The reason why we have to pay attention is it's not just in Florida. It's now in North and South Carolina. It's in Mississippi. It's in Arkansas. So these things, those things spread like wildfire, especially to areas that feel like their way of life is being threatened. Mm, yeah. We aren't saying we're threatening your way of life. We are saying we're asking you to accept these people as well because this is their way of life. Sure. Their response to this is, no, you don't get a way of life. Yeah. But right. what I don't get is it's not like you're going to make these people go away. Right. Mm -hmm. right. That's the part where I'm just like, got to acknowledge their existence. Yeah. If we want a multicultural, multi-racial uh, democracy, then we should be able to start there. Because somehow being for government um, uh, you know, tr it became um, being you know anti the, the 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 other side or anti the things that all of us or most of us want. We want to you, you would want our kids to be able to go to school safely. Would want the freedom to be able to control my own body if I was a woman if I was younger. But nonetheless, it scares the crap out of me just as a man on behalf of those people. And it feels like this is something that is an issue that. We had moved past on, you know, 80 percent of the country, I think uh, uh, even 60 percent of Republicans are for a, a fairly decent woman's right to choose and a fairly decent sort of middle landing ground, if you want to call it 16 weeks or kind of where we sat on but for why, the last 50 years. But why are those Republicans not making more of a vocal push? Like, yeah. It seems like they're well, willing a, yeah. to, yeah. you know, dissent privately, but not publicly. Yep. And, you know, to the detriment of their party. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so if, if you're looking at, especially looking at some of these new Trump trials where you're seeing a whole dozens of people say the man has defamed me he's done this against me but I'd still vote for him for yeah. the next election then what am I supposed to do with that especially when you're the platform of ethics and such again it's right. power power have so has sort of trumped uh, ethics and it's also trumped uh, political discourse because it used to be that you could have a conversation yep. of civility yeah. with a person who had opposing views from you and you could find some kind of common resolution but if out the gate you're saying that because I believe that Rosa Parks sat on a bus and mm. didn't refuse to not give her her seat that I'm woke yeah. I don't understand how you can call me this new derogatory term that you've created when this is just a fact that happened I don't know where we start here ma'ams and sirs yes. and non-binary pals if we do not believe in science 
Yes. Yeah. Where's the the middle ground? If we do not yeah. believe in historical <laughs> fact, yeah. yeah. Where where yeah. are we starting, ma'ams and sirs, and non-binary pals? I, I yeah, I don't know. I have a theory that when uh, Kellyanne Conway went on television and said uh, alternative facts, that we that was almost the casket closing on. Uh, we are we're already in our own but algorithmic she was allowed silos, to say right? The, right. That that we didn't, there's no such thing her. as an t- alternative f- facts. I mean, I understand that people say, okay, well, something was one way and now it is not. Okay, that doesn't. You know, you learn things. That was the interesting thing. We none of us had been through a pandemic together, and we all had to go through it, it t- together. And there's science, then it has a percentage that it is, you know, but but and but somehow the one percent of the science deniers had enough of a voice with, you know, AM radio disinformation, you know, as long as it could coerce the power that was needed from that one percent quest, then it seemed that it was successful. Because if you can sway enough with the with the one percent of disinformation, the truth it takes a long time to make itself away around the world, but a lie is heard instantly. Mm-hmm. That's where I feel like we're at. Like you said, where do you go when one side wants to destroy a kind of way of life that has been there in the name of feeling threatened on their way of life? Yes, right. At, to to the extent that they also want to ig- deny its existence. Yeah, mm. let's do this. Um, here's what we know so far, and uh, just so we can kind of st- we can start off the bat with this: Florida's 2023 legislative session is only halfway done, and some of the legislation passed is seriously, seriously disturbing. Uh, as the governor gears up for an expected presidential run. Things are about to get ugly. Here's what's happened under his watch so far. A bill that allows people to carry concealed guns without a permit and proper training. A bill that makes it harder and more expensive to sue insurance companies and businesses. And that was a big one because they basically allowed insurance lobbyists to just sneak that bill right on through. How about a law to ban abortion at six weeks of uh, pregnancy? Pregnancy, not presidency. That's another big one because that law um, has no um, exceptions or exemptions. So it is condemning women with ectopic pregnancies or who have been raped or victim of, of incest to not have advocacy because if you go through some programs, and I can speak to this from firsthand experience, sure. uh, you have to wait a two to three week period to be signed up for their Medicare programs to get some of these services. If it now takes that long, but you don't find out until right. you're at the four to five week, you don't have the... So you, basically what this bill does is it only makes abortion accessible to the very, very wealthy. Yeah. And that's by design. Mm. But it's a, it's hilarious because it's going to backfire. I really believe that they think that this will make more white people, but the people who this will disenfranchise the most are people of color. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So really you're just making more people of color. Yeah, yeah, Their yeah. next thing is really um, interesting too. They're, they made a bill banning classroom instructions about sexual orientation gender identity in all grades a felony to provide gender affirming health care to transgendered minors and a bill that has made it legislatively possible for people to deny trans people uh, care due to their uh, religious affiliation and the reason why that's problematic is because in uh, 2012 there was an incident uh, in which a transgendered woman who was born a man went into diabetic shock and when the EMS responders arrived they found the victim to be uh, transgendered and they failed to render services. So if this is allowed to happen, in this case, it was uh, the NYPD, but if this is allowed to happen as a state initiative, you can see how this could be problematic overall in a statewide initiative because you could then train people to then say, I will not provide care Mm -hmm. because of my religious affiliation. So then you have to, as a trans person, say, hey, I'm trans. Can you send the person who doesn't have a religious affiliation affiliation against me, but be able to say that in a moment of duress when you need urgent care. Can you That's do that statistically I impossible. Right. Yeah. So it's just things like this that send a quagmire into what should be a protected idiom, especially given the Hippocratic Oath is save a life. Yeah. There should be no religious exemptions at all. And yet this ban now makes that possible. I feel this like must that, scare the crap out of you as yeah. a person who it, educates kids. It does. Yeah. It does. You, it's funny because you also talked about gender 
reassignment surgery and things like that. I all I know is from what I've seen from afar that it's grossly, grossly overblown. Like it, it is just it's like a, an anecdotal thing that's then used to scare parents, suburban moms and things like that into, you know, voting for this man that then does these things. And I'm interested. Are you finding that a lot of the parents because I actually heard this yesterday. Somebody said they're moving to Florida so that they don't have to deal with a teacher telling their child that they're going to be a different sex. And I was like, that doesn't happen. You yeah. know that doesn't happen. That is a uh, that's anecdotal. I don't. I, I can't claim to speak for someone's story or walk in their shoes. But this is uh, this is these are anecdotal things that are being used to manipulate power on a massive, m you know, millions of people level. Sure. And do you do you find that for yourself, the parents kind of does that sort of seep over into it? We can't make gun regulations right. and things like that. Do you find that that it's e getting easier with more vocal kids or or harder? You know, it's interesting because obviously artists are usually others. So yeah. I obviously see a lot of gender fluidity and uh, the kids, uh, they are the most woke. You know mm, what I mean? Like right. We go around in a circle before every class and say our pronouns. You know what I mean? Mm. And just make sure everybody feels accepted. And, and it's it's hard because I don't know what they're going home to. You know what I mean? And yeah. and um it's it's worrisome but the majority of kids accept other kids for who they are and um they recognize that their that their rights are getting stripped yes, from them I absolutely. Mean, especially, yeah they're very aware yeah. um and how are they responding to especially the new legislation that's been um blocking uh diversity in public colleges and federal things i know as a person who went to school i re relied a lot on that kind of funding to uh, receive higher education. So how are those kids navigating through this new blockage and new lack of access? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I think so many artists since the pandemic have stopped going to college. Fair. Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of them, their first two years were in masks in a dorm room. Taking or class. on Zoom. Right, yeah. on Zoom. Um, I didn't even think about that. But yeah, it's, it's I mean, interesting. It feels, uh, college feels further away than ever for them. Okay. Um, so I I don't know if I can speak to that specifically just because so many are making other choices. Now. I get that. Yeah. And I also forget that we have an entire generation of kids that didn't get any of the regular milestones that most kids get, like a prom, mm. school it's dances, yeah. sure. um, school class projects, yep. things like this. They didn't have a any of those things, you know, grad, grad night. Yeah. I... They didn't have any of those things. And there's an entire generation uh, you know, yes. not just one gener, but like three high yeah. school years that didn't have. So that's an entire generation of students yes. that didn't have any of those things. And I'm just wondering, given this lack of resource, missing time, and this new Gestapo thing, how is that affecting their anxiety? Yeah, it's um, every kid in this generation, I if they're 18, they're 16, and that's how I deal with them. If mm. they're eight, they're actually six. Like, yeah. it has been an at least two-year regression. Wow. wow. Because you're missing socialization. Yeah. More so than the education. You're, you're and missing that's so socialization, important. and you're missing those milestones, yes. which are huge they're events huge. Yeah. in life. They're huge. So, um, Learning to drive. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. You know, another the thing that's going on right now that has just that has actually just passed that I want to talk about is there's a bill that bans people from entering bathrooms other than their sex assigned at birth and it requires bathrooms to be listed as men, women, or unisex. I think that is something that is on the table. You can talk about that, you know, because you could make these kind of Tucker Carlson kind of uh, you know straw man arguments about uh, some perv went into the wrong bathroom and things like that. But the the encroachment upon kids that are that are confused, and if you're not giving them the ability to work out their confusion, and you can't talk about it up to age 12, and then they can't deal with a bathroom that is based on the way that they are feeling or, or are identifying as, I, I don't understand how that is tenable. It's an affront to science as well because yeah. there's enough statistical data that shows that pedophiles and people who are considered perverts 99.9% uh, .9 of them are not homosexual mm. or transgendered. Yeah. And there is way Facts. Like, 
a whole yep. lot of data that supports that. Yeah. So that's you why we live like, in West Hollywood. If, <laughs> if you want to at me, go ahead. I will give you the data to back that's up right. what I'm saying because it's a long list of it. Just because yeah. you found one source on YouTube that counteracts what I'm saying when there's like 20 different doctors from about 17 different universities that say what I'm saying factually, yep. don't at me. I'm just letting you know I'm <laughs> yeah. not the one today. I'm not the one. But, and because of that, I don't understand how these, the, the reason why I know these policies are being made is because first to get them to work, they debunk science. There's a bill that <laughs> bans children from drag shows and revokes the food and beverage license of businesses that admit children to these performances. Now, I want to say something about what, yeah, I need, I would like to know what defines a child in in this bill but i mean some of the greatest times i ever had was being 16 at drag shows so but i what don't defines understand drag yeah there right. are characters that do drag in disney shows and there's a disney world right, right there and mrs. that's part doubtfire. of doubtfire the... oh word mrs doubtfire word yeah wow yeah okay, exactly so what... just made a broadway show about okay it. Yeah. so so right. that can't come to florida <laughs> so right, mrs yeah. doubtfire can't tour in florida no, is that no, what no. he's saying yeah. Yeah. that's it okay there i know there's a scene in um aladdin where uh uh, the genie dresses up as like a girl mm. character, or whatever, and they do Robin that, Williams. and they do that li in the live action show. Yep. So now you're gonna say that you're gonna take mm -hmm. out? This is just dumb. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And again, it's it's like people people might say, okay, well, this is Florida, especially we have a, we have people that listen to us from all over the world. Uh, if this is Florida, why should I care? And it it is it's one of those it's things. A virus. It is a it's a virus with a hefty electoral count. Mm -hmm. in determining the complete and total power levers on ostensibly a, a, a complete government that is if uh, you know that is six to three conservative supreme court for the rest of our lifetimes likelihood right that is also you have a house that is it's a narrow lead on the right but it is one of those that its only job on the right is to really gunk up a government all they want to do really do is stop government from working from the inside which means rights like these go by the wayside you know because you don't have the levers in power to control to control it and if and if florida controls the electoral college in 18 months we're all looking at a completely completely different country mm -hmm. you know one of the things we have here is considered the impact of his agenda on the state of florida so far uh, parents and families are selling their homes and moving because of school censorship book bans and health care restrictions that have made the home state, their home state, less safe for children. And they basically bankrupt with this new ban of not being able to give funding to diverse, you know, for diversification in universities. That is crippling the HSB, um, you know, the historically black colleges there uh, because, you know, of which there are a few. And if now you're diverting their funds, you're effectively cutting off their source supply. So you're making it so that people now have, who already had very limited choice, have now none. Mm -hmm. I think I've heard arguments on both sides where, where, you know, he's gaining strength with this sort of Christian nationalist mm -hmm. dog whistle, right? Which um, it does not allow for what I, uh, what I. Think I've I'm aware of of the Bible, you know, of what I've read of the Bible. It yeah, does, we read a different Bible. We were we reading a different one. <laughs> we read a different I think one. we were talking off air. The only King James that uh, it seems to represent is the guy that plays for the Lakers. <laughs> but uh, um, I I am interested in, you know, if you look at the numbers, I think most people don't are starting to figure out. Oh wow, we don't this is we don't like this. We don't like this guy you know, getting, doing these things. We don't like some of these things going too far. But it's, it's interesting too, though, because you see one presentation, like I was, okay, I was trying to do my research about this and I would watch, you know, some clips from MSNBC, CNN, C-SPAN, a couple of others. And they would say that there are a whole lot of pockets in Florida. They're like, yeah, we're really against DeSantis. But then you'd watch a couple of other CNN and Fox clips and they'd be like, no, these it's counties are like, no, off. we are about this. Yeah. They got, you know, no woke dies here banners yeah. in their bars and yeah. the restaurants and whatnot so i'm like who do we believe yeah there's a discussion to ha be had about everything from you know security to fear of of you know if you come from a country like cuba or venezuela or something and you hear the word socialism and ha whatever your opinion is on that sways you to the one team or the other in this country because it seems like you have to be that way and this is why, again, this inter this episode was so interesting is because I do think there's a lot of things that we agree on. But at the end of the day, 
most of this stuff is not a good faith argument. This is not, it's it's kind of for cruelty's sake to push that power lever and keep pushing that power lever. And I question right now, much like in 2000, when, you know, when basically the Bushes willed their way, you know, into an electoral win in Florida, which then tipped the balance of the presidential election. That's why we're trying to spotlight this right now is because I think it's going to once again come down to the kids. It's yeah. going to come down to registering the kids to vote. It's going to come down to increasing awareness about these laws that are coming online or that are already online if they're not aware about it. And and really just, uh, you know, it's kind of a lot of us saying, you know, going to the kids and saying, you're going to have to please. help us, please. No, but I think us. we need to stop doing to these children. Stop being like, okay, we fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got yeah, no, 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 but I mean. But no, know. how do we empower these kids so that we're not saying take our mess? I feel like that's a question we need to be asking. Yeah. I think it's by empowering them and telling them that they can make a difference. Okay. Right? Yeah. Because, I mean. I, I am at home a lot and just thinking, I don't know what else to do. You know, I yeah. think a lot of people feel like their hands are tied, but I think kids, it, when you tell them their vote actually matters, that they mm. can change that. Do you think there's a responsibility? Because in the case of Disney, I find that, like, I don't, when the whole Bud Light thing went on with Kid Rock and shooting the Bud Light and everything like that, I saw some billboards that's called. Um, that called the the right that was mad at that commercial snowflakes, which I thought was awesome. If Bud Light really did that, was you know I don't like the necessarily the taunting back and forth and things like that, but in some way there, Bud Light is kind of like from a money standpoint, it makes way more sense to be inclusive, right? It's I a it's bad they, business to be honestly, white Christian nationalist. I wish nationalist. That they had gone and gotten a bunch of kids. And said, "Holla at the." That's what I would have done. I think they did in the comments, though. Like, I think a bunch, jump, a bunch of kids jumped on Anheuser Busch was and was like, like "Fuck um, your beer, Kid Rock." Uh, when, <laughs> when, when was the last time you hit yeah. that song? Yeah, 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 yeah. Are yeah, you yeah. relevant? And like, <laughs> don't you shoot Bud Light in your backyard anyway? anyway like, yeah. I just thought that was a Tuesday <laughs> for you, yeah. exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And yeah. you also are a, a, a little redneck dude who got famous off a of black idiom. So, I, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Respect. I mean, yeah. It's it's interesting because again, the cultural appropriation, everything like that. I, I, I'm, I'm here for that. But you're like, I think it's great. But, uh, my thing is, if you're gonna be a cultural appropriator, stay in your damn lane. <laughs> don't right. switch up because Word. you're like, oh, well, that didn't work, and the black people don't mess with me no more. So let me be conservative yeah, yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. sing with a country twang. So now white people <laughs> like me. Nah, That's you came from do. the gutter with do. a black lady with dreads That's playing your up. drums and bitches dancing in cages. Stay in your damn <laughs> lane, <laughs> sir. Yeah. <laughs> I love when a company is going to flex. If that was a Bud Light flex back, I, I actually, I'm, I'm here for that kind of stuff. I love it. But how much do you think that the art actually should lean in harder? Like Disney World or, you know, Hollywood here, we try to make diverse films. We try to, you know, do a lot of things. That's what's so great about California is it is so multicultural, multiracial. It's it's just a beautiful thing. It's got all, it's full of all of its problems. It's got, you know, mad problems and things, but we are definitely planet Earth here you know and i think so the so the art that comes out of here in a lot of ways represents that but in the dance world or in yeah in in other areas do you think it's we should actually lean in harder always um as an example we had the first gay couple on world of dance right? it was dope thank you that uh, was yours that was, yeah. <laughs> that was yours and we had to fight for every piece of it the the kiss that happened was the biggest meeting wow. the longest meeting the longest fight ever and i'm very thankful that nbc ended up airing it but it was a fight yeah but i saw a direct reflection we got i can't even tell you how many hundreds of thousands of emails and letters some of them hate mail but That's so many of like a 15 year old kid in their room and you know yeah um, Alabama and this is the first time I've seen what I think I am on TV or this is the first time I've seen any representation of that and yeah. it made them feel okay so yes I say always lean in it's always gonna yeah. do good. Amen I mean yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I hope that we get to you know feel more I mean we we feel it here because again we're just we, we're, we're kind of planet earth but I hope I hope we feel it more in some of the more super deep red states because some of the you know anecdotes on the bad things that are the results of all these sort of heinous bills that have been going on since Roe versus Wade fell since um you know the the Republican state elections where they did win in the midterms it almost seems like it was a pulling back 
Roe versus Wade and having the sort of blessing of the Supreme Court gave all these state legislatures uh, a green light to just just stiff arm these super super like you know all draconian policies and things that that are you know that are and should scare the crap out of all of us so i hope we see more art coming out of that or coming out of floor you know coming out of places where i guess this would be you know if i was a if i was somebody right now and i was frustrated by my state's uh government i definitely we would be either trying to figure out yeah i, I would definitely try yeah. to get my friends and be like look because it's going to take all of us it's going to take all of us banding together to stop this train it's already out of the station and you florida's know? a beautiful place it deserves that opportunity it's got you know it is some of the best marshland country it's it's a beautiful beautiful area yeah and I don't feel like the conservatives make it bad either. I feel like they're being gaslit. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Which you is know? which is what we want to talk about. It's like we have a lot more things that I think we're together on. We're being made to believe that we are either Hatfield or McCoy. It's also, not that. You, because if you're allowing this bubble to exist where your kid never has to learn about, I don't know, civil rights or gay <laughs> people or <laughs> yeah. whatever, yeah. then that means that they only going to live in that county. Like, how yeah. they going to go out into the world? Because in the world, these things exist, ma'am, sirs, and non-binary pals. Yeah, yep. So yep. how are you preparing your child mm. to live mm -hmm. if all you're saying is just live in the house mm -hmm. yeah you're stunting the growth of these sure. people by telling them no we're gonna do everything in our power to make sure these people are eradicated i guess but that's impossible so i don't understand its merit mm. right it feels like you don't know where these laws are going to stop because it just keeps encroaching, encroaching, yeah. encroaching. The only place it, it can stop is, a f like, for example, full and total ban on a woman being able to have an abortion, even in cases of rape or incest. Because that is much of the stated position of the super far right. Uh, I'm f Friends and family I know that have stated that. That's their number one only issue that they care about. And, and, and I get it. We can and have a conversation why, about that. I wonder why, though. I, I Is mean, it strictly religious reasons. I, you know, again, you can't. It's the chicken and egg argument, and it, and it goes around where if you believe in life, but then not life once it's born, it to me, it's not a good faith argument. It breaks I, down. I usually have conversations with people like that because I'm like, I just really want to have a realistic understanding of what your position is. Yeah. Because your position is, I should be dead. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I would like uh -huh. you to tell me why I should be dead according to you. Fair. Because I suffered from an ectopic pregnancy. I had to have an abortion to survive said ectopic pregnancy and under this new law I die so wow. why do yeah. you think that I'm allowed to die mm. please tell me I, I oh, bring tears That's very cool. much uh, yeah. relate to what you're saying um, and thank you for being open enough to share that um, I relate to it in a lot of ways I'm adopted and I get thrown the phrase all the time well you could have been aborted and I'm like yeah I'd find my way here eventually <laughs> yes I know but you here, would the other thing is like I I'm not really interested if we're not going to protect the people that are here yeah why are we so worried about you know protecting the people that aren't here until there's emotional and financial support in the adoption triad of for the adoptee for the birth family for the adoption family like mm. it's it's it, it's not interchangeable it's not a substitute and that doesn't uh negate the pregnancy there's still the burden of the pregnancy there's risk sure um i have a genetic disease and i could potentially carry a baby but it would kill me um and so again it's like you're okay you're With, pro life and, you're, you're, and you decided but, that i should die yeah okay. because yeah. my technicality doesn't fit your doctrine so please right. explain to me why that is yeah. and usually they just sit there and go what yeah. like, like, no, because no, it's no. not a good faith argument but uh, but you're so adamant about it's it control. Yeah. and you're changing laws about it yeah. and this is never coming to your purview so i'm going to interrupt your purview yeah. i have had one ectopic pregnancy and i have had one pregnancy that i couldn't carry to term because mm. it had an ovarian cyst i had to have two different abortions in both cases i wanted to keep my child mm. i was not given the option mm. and so the abortions that i received saved my fertility so i i may have have a child in that the future option, yeah. why are you telling me i don't have that option why are you telling me that i should go to hell for saving my life and wanting to bring a child into the world yes, but just being denied mm -hmm. that right because of my body 
Why are you saying that to me? And why do you feel that you get the right to say that to me? Yeah. Tell me to my face why I'm supposed to die, sir. Mm, and amen. it's usually sir. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, usually yeah, is. sure. <laughs> Yeah. Usually is. For us, touring through the South has become problematic, especially during the Trump years. We have a black lead singer. I don't know how it kind of slipped into this almost sort of permission to kind of push back on this. But like to have now, a, you don't even need anything to carry a gun in Florida. You don't need a permit. You don't even. I don't even think you need a driver's license. You can at me in the comments and shit, but I don't even think you. I think you just need a pulse. And there's, but that's and why you can people carry are a fleeing. weapon. People are fleeing and people and artists are saying, yeah, like right. on our, you know, major artists like wanna... Florida, we might skip it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. 400 million guns and um, you're allowed you to carry know, them. Maybe y'all should drive um, <laughs> to Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll skip that. Too. Yeah. Meet us at the Claremont. Shout out. Listen, Claremont. you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's sad because there are a whole bunch of people in Florida who are like, yeah, we with y'all. We don't get it either. Yeah. yeah. You know, so then you're making these people suffer because, you know, a few anti wokes are, you know, woke. But I feel like that's their own version of woke. Mm. Mm-hmm. I was mm-hmm. like, I feel like you're woke yourself. It's just a different title. Mm. So I feel yeah. like we should demonize their version of woke and call it a term. Mm. Well, that's, yeah. It's, Let's get on that. <laughs> Yeah. Does it, does you know what I mean? Oh, you're fake blessed or whatever. Because that's really what it is to me. Oh, you you got the faux blessing. Oh, you got the faux blessing. <laughs> you got I'll the see you. Blessing. you. You in with God. Yeah, I'll yeah, see yeah, you. yeah. The Lord. You in with JC. You, <laughs> <laughs> you got the bracelets and everything. Uh, yeah. I don't. I, if it is in with the Lord, then I, yeah, again, we're going to have to get on, we're gonna have to get on the same that? page. Yeah. yeah. We're going to have to get on the same page. I was reading what the Lord said, and the Lord didn't do none of that stuff. No. The Lord stood with the meek and the outcast. Yeah. So, Love yeah. thy neighbor. Love thy neighbor. That's what we're here to do. And Turn the other cheek evens. A lot of the things that we talk about, like we say, they are ridiculously important and insanely stupid all at the same time. So one of the things that we're gonna we're trying to do is also make this make this where, like we said, we can take the piss out of it and we make it to where uh, you know it's also a little fun too because somehow relationships and just living your life does inevitably spill over into all these sort of societal issues and and these policy issues which is you know politics and politics and everything but one of the tricks we're going to do shout out to one of the show sponsors which is the uh, roll with it or bounce hey hey yes. hey but uh roll with it or bounce oh, check it check it out theme song. <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly so before we go we like to close out all of our shows with something we call a sonic boom, boom. that's right a way we can go and leave something with you where you can implement small and actionable items to hopefully help you or someone you love in life make a difference, even if in the smallest of ways. And today we are offering up a checklist on this wonderful Floridian subject. <laughs> uh, we want to let you know ways that you can uh, be of action and where you can slap yep. uh, the situation. If, so, if because what you the, heard today was you like, yeah, yeah, it was you know any, anything that interests you. If you're like, man, that's that's messed up. How can I save democracy for planet Earth? You, this is what, the, this is what we for, can do. This is what we can do. So here's some ways you can get involved. One. You can support Equality Florida. That's an organization advocating for equality across the state with a focus on fighting back against DeSantis and allies. Slate of hate. So if you can't donate, they're always looking for volunteers. So if you're in the state of Florida, especially if you're a young person and you're like, I ain't got money like that, but I want to do something or want to be in that number, they do have some wonderful rallies that are coming up. They have um, a rally coming up uh, at the Capitol to raise awareness and fight against attempts to take away people's freedoms and infringe upon their rights. So if none of that's appealing to you, that's cool. Um, (laughs) But we do want you to have your own awareness so you can do something of a personal nature and uh, fill out a speaker request form and they'll arrange for a speaker to discuss the topics that are near and dear to your heart with your audience. One of the primary causes that uh, we've sort of built the show around is Vote Save America. Go to votesaveamerica.com and Mm -hmm. they are probably the best source of information and initiatives to help you get involved and get out the vote. 
because that is ultimately what all this comes down to. Mm-hmm. It's just the, the, the vote is going to be what's going to save us. It's not going to get saved as state legislature level. It's not going to get saved in anything but the vote. So go to votesaveamerica.com, get involved and engaged in what VSA is all about, which is basically it's a key to saving democracy in places like Florida. So again, we know that donating isn't always an option. And so there are tons of other things that you can do. Uh, you can start by signing up there for their newsletter to keep you in the loop on the most important things to know and how to get involved. You can also volunteer and attend key campaigns and parties, uh, even if virtually, which is incredibly, has been amazingly powerful over the last three election cycles. So by joining their community there, votesaveamerica.com, you also gain access to training, resources, networking that's going to empower you to take action and get others to listen and act. And I tell you, when I say this, it literally, you go to votesaveamerica.com, it's like one click and you have everything you need to know to how to help. So that's great. You can also do grassroots types of things. You can support other organizations, advocacy groups, and you can do small things that appeal to just your circle of friends. Like if you know a certain issue is very nuanced, you could do a TikTok on it if you know how to explain it and circle that just amongst your group of friends to help them understand some of these issues better. There's a whole lot of ways that we can participate and we have to look at not just the ancillary things that are available, but the ways that we can disrupt the consciousness using the same tactics, but using them in a we go high when they go low kind of way, because Mm -hmm. that's the overall arching method here. We're not saying that in order to exist, we need to eradicate you. Right. We're saying that we exist. Include us. That's Mm -hmm. what you're going to have to do. So figure out your tolerance because we've had to tolerate you for a millennia. And we're done. (laughs) (laughs) We're done. Come on, Michelle. Uh, And and real quick, what are are you are you promoting anything? What are you working on? What's your big project you're working on right now? My big project right now is I have an intensive that's uh, for dancers 15 through 25. So um, and how can people find ways to participate in your intensive? Yeah, they can go to my Instagram which will lead you to the Storytellers Intensive Instagram. And, that's Marinda um, Davis, yeah. at Marinda Davis. Thank Get you, yeah. The plug. Uh, it's, it, that's the IG, Marinda Davis. Uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, we do a lot more than dance. We we sit in a circle a lot and journal and reflect and um, get to the issues that we're talking about. So it about also sounds here. like there's some life coaching. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of life coaching. I love that. I love yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, in lieu of kids not having access to things like guidance, counselors, like services like these are really, really important important they yes, are. They yes, are. Yes, um, yeah. I would not be alive without my mentors so I know the importance well thank you for that. taking that energy and helping an entire new generation that's really commendable amen amen it's, it's an honor yeah. to do it amen all right well that's our show thanks for listening to slap the power and special 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 mad love and thanks to Marinda Davis our guest host today too thanks for having we me. can't forget <laughs> our sponsors roll with it or bounce that that's was right. such a little fun game so if you're looking for a great party game that will uh, appease a whole bunch of people don't forget this wonderful wonderful that's card game that's on the low low that's right <laughs> The Lolo. The Lolo, Lolo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. all these other things are digitized and cost millions of dollars. Like, this is on the Lolo. Like, you could get this. That's right. We'll put the, we'll put their link in the in the show notes as well. You and roll join, with it or yeah, bounce. Roll it or bounce. Which way? It's a, actually a cool game. Uh, join us every week when we chop up real issues from a local and global perspective and cross with how as artists we can make a difference by branding together in small but massive ways. And you can add us on your socials uh, on IG. We're at underscore slap the power. And make sure that you sign up for free at slapthepower.com so we can make sure that you never miss out on every new thing that we're doing. We have a lot of new sponsorships that are giving us some cool doodads and we might throw one your way. Yep. And if you uh, like what you heard on this show, please be sure to write a review, like, and subscribe because community is based on the word of other people in the community. Amen, amen. And we do these these shows and the only thing we ask, a little gentleman's agreement, the only thing we ask is, you know, you know, just give us give us some love, you know, get, and tell your friends about it and things like that. But uh, as always, if you want to know how you can affect change yourself in issues that really matter to so many. Again, make sure to go to votesaveamerica.com and you can get there through our site, slapthepower.com. Now go slap some love into the day. Hey, you. Yeah. See you next show. <laughs> Bye. 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 
Slap the Power is written and produced by Rick Barrio Dill and Maya Sykes. Executive producer Duff Ferguson. Our senior producer is Sabrina Seward. Associate producer Bree Corey. Audio and visual engineering and studio facilities provided by Slap Studios LA with distribution through our collective home for social progress in art, Slap the Network. If you have any ideas for a show you want to hear or see, or if you would like to be a guest artist on our show, please email us at info at slapthepower.com. Come.